September 6, 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord No one should be lost. The Gospel talks not only about fraternal correction, but beyond it, to win our brother or sister to the Lord, that is to bring the person back to the community, the family, and the fold of Christ. The intention of Jesus is that no one should be lost. That is why the attitude of Jesus towards sinners depicted in the gospel is, first, to reach out, second, to open hearts to reconciliation, and third, the church as the go-between. Number one, to reach out. Jesus takes the first initiative, the first step in the process of reconciliation. For though he had no sin, he entered into the world of sinners so that we can be lifted up from our condition of sinfulness. Jesus' attitude towards sinners is often contrary to the ordinary experience of people where we, except those who have sinned against us, or who hurt us should take the first step. Feeling right use, we expect the other party to take the initiative because we are the ones agreed or we are the victims. All of us are sinners. Sometimes, we are the source of hatred, envy, jealousy, selfishness, which are the cause of division or breakup of relationships. Even the prophet Isaiah admits, Woe is me! I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet as brothers and sisters, we are responsible for each other, just like the prophet Ezekiel, who was appointed watchman for the house of Israel to speak against the wickedness happening in his country. Number 2. Open our hearts to reconciliation. Reconciliation can happen only if we open our hearts to our brothers and sisters who have erred or wronged us. Reconciliation is a two-way process, a dialogue, but it begins with humility, which is the opposite of pride. Pride is the main hindrance to reconciliation because it does not stoop down to understand the condition of the lowly ones. Pride condemns. On the other hand, humility allows compassion and mercy to flow over with the aim of winning over our brothers and sisters to the Lord, of bringing back the black sheep who have separated themselves from the community or the family. Third, the church as the go-between. The church is the last resort where one can find an impartial judgment without prejudice and bias as long as the sinner asks for pardon and mercy in humility and contriteness of heart. The church takes the role of the final arbiter where the wounded sinner can find healing 
and reconciliation. Pope Francis likens the church to a field hospital where one can find first aid and rehabilitation while in the field of battle in this earthly life. The church is sent not to condemn but to give mercy and compassion and at times to intercede on behalf of sinners. Jesus came to the world that we might have life, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Every person is valuable in the eyes of the Lord. Christ offered himself as expiation of sins, even dying for us sinners.